The islands of Hawaii have become a familiar paradise, but ancient Polynesians had to use the stars to find them. And it is the stars that bring a new breed of explorers here now. The highest point of these tropical islands is a frigid alpine desert, which may be the best astronomical site in the world. The Earth's highest volcano, Mauna Kea, stands above city lights and industrial pollution. So otherworldly, astronauts trained here to walk on the moon. Professional astronomers consider this mountain their mecca. This month's star attraction, Comet Halley, a lofty cloud of ice and dust some nine miles long, I think the amateur astronomers and the professional astronomers share a lot of the same enthusiasm over something as exciting as a comet, and in particular a comet as famous as this one. We all uh, enjoy looking at it, taking pictures of it, trying to understand more about it, and enjoying the whole nighttime sky that we'll soon have available to us here in a few minutes. Minutes are inconsequential measures against the 76-year wait between Halley's appearances or the comet's four billion year past. As a once-in-a-lifetime novelty, it creates a special excitement. Oh, this is, <laughs> these are heavy binoculars. It's something that you want to be able to experience, even for those of us who don't do much in comet watching or stargazing. I have trouble finding the Big Dipper and the sky, but I just love the idea of being able to see something that I, you know, once. I think that people do expect to be able to walk out and see this big bright object in the sky and without searching very hard. I think people expect to see the comet in the sky and see it moving. The pictures that you see published show a, a big long tail which makes it look like it's flying through the atmosphere and, and spewing off this tail. And although that's what it looks like, the object is really uh, millions of miles away. The tail is being caused by the, the solar wind. Renowned astronomers come here, willing to endure the cold and the thin air for what they call the best seeing in the world. The top of Mauna Kea reaches halfway to outer space. Its gigantic multi-million dollar eyes take astronomers the rest of the way there. These telescopes require intensive care. Refrigerated domes keep temperatures constant inside and out. Any variation distorts the images. With its tin can housing, the 24-inch telescope is less sophisticated than its state-of-the-art neighbors. But as the eye for a special camera, it makes an important contribution. We have to ensure that the telescope tracks very accurately on the comet during this half-hour exposure. It's hard to imagine anything much more exciting than a comet that makes a quick pass through the solar system. Well, what this camera with its photographic uh, film does is take a very wide angle picture of the sky. We have electronic detectors that make uh, excellent images of small spots in the sky. But when you want to study uh, something that's very large, such as a comet tail, then uh, photography is still really the best way to do it. Making several half-hour exposures a night, Cruikshank observes changes in the comet's tail, a luminous streamer stretching 10 million miles from the core, the equivalent of a toy marble leaving a 10-mile trail. While most of us consider stargazing a nighttime activity, at two of Mauna Kea's telescopes, observations continue 24 hours a day. At NASA's infrared facility, astronomers can collect data from wavelengths unseen by the human eye. In the infrared, it's possible to tell the temperatures of distant objects and to identify their composition. Aimed at Halley, this telescope's data suggests that the comet is made of many things which make up our own atmosphere, water, methane, carbon, oxygen, and ammonia. Relentless scrutiny by Earthbound telescopes has given scientists a great deal of information about what they call the cosmic refrigerator. But to confirm their theories, astronomers have taken their vision to space. Two Japanese spacecraft took pictures of the glowing hydrogen atoms surrounding the comet and measured solar winds. Both traveled at least 89,000 miles from the core. The Soviets sent Vega 1 and 2 within 5,100 miles of Halley. 
though both were damaged by clouds of dust smashing them at 150,000 miles an hour. They successfully recorded the closest glimpses of the comet ever, confirming that it has a solid core and that it is some nine miles across. A few dubbed the probe, which ventured within 350 miles of the nucleus, Kamikaze. But Giotto survived and revealed some startling facts. Dust jets burst with unexplained force from conical vents on the comet, and its surface is a velvet black. It is certain that scientists will learn more from this appearance of the comet than in all previous observations combined. There's a lot of romance and uh, even drama standing here in the cold looking at the stars, either through a telescope like I'm doing now or just and then there, there are a few extra moments just uh, looking at the star field outside the dome. The stars that most people never get to see because they're glued to their TV sets and their nice uh, well-lit rooms and in their well-lit cities are a constant source of beauty, a source of beauty that most of us miss these days. It's a kind of communion with nature, and I think that that uh, always helps us understand more about ourselves as well as the world we live in.